All right, so today we're going to talk about um, graphing sine and cosine functions, so on an xy plane. So we're moving from the unit circle to an xy plane that we're used to. All right, so in this section you'll be able to graph um, functions that look like this, so sine graphs as well as cosine graphs. And then you'll be able to determine a sine and cosine wave given a written des description, and you'll also be able to determine a formula for a sine or cosine wave given the graph. All right, so we're going to learn everything we need to know about graphs of sine and cosine. All right, so for this first one, this is the graph of sine of x. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, and so notice what's on the x-axis. All right, so on the x-axis we see 2 pi, so that should remind us about a full rotation on our unit circle. And so in fact, these points here are actually what's on our quadrant, so our quadrantal angles like pi over 2. All right, this one is pi, and this one is 3 pi over 2. So basically what we're doing is we take this unit circle where we can go around and around and around and we're stretching it out and just making it into a line. So if you look at zero, sine of x is zero. So at zero we have the point zero on the graph. At pi over two, sine is one. So at x equals pi over two, the function is at one, y equals one. All right, then pi, sine is 0. So here at x equals pi, the graph is at y equals 0. x equals 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1. So on the graph, it's at negative 1. And then back to 2 pi, sine is 0. And then we can continue around the circle again. And that's exactly what we do here. Same thing, we're going back around the circle until we get to 4 pi, and then um, 6 pi. And we could have also gone the opposite direction with negatives, and we will get the exact same thing. So this is what our sine curve looks like. All right, and so there's some other terms that we're going to talk about, like a period, which is one cycle. We know sine has period 2 pi, so that's how long it takes for it to repeat. All right. Um, then here's our graph of cosine. Looks very similar. This time it starts at 1 because cosine of 0 is 1. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we got 1, 0, then we're going negative 1, 0, 1. And that's one period, which is 2 pi. All right, and just continues on. So we've stretched out our unit circle. We have some other terms that we're going to get used to, like amplitude. So the distance from the middle of the graph to the highest or lowest point is our amplitude. Um, we're going to get a formula to how to figure out what the period of a graph is, because it could change. All right, um, so my little recall here, the period of the sine graph is 2 pi, and the period of the cosine graph is also 2 pi. That's how long it takes to repeat. So let's look at this graph, and we're going to remember how transformations of graphs work. All right, so example one says, explain how to obtain the graph of negative 3 sine of x from the graph of sine of x. All right, so remember, what does it mean when something's happening outside of the function versus what does it mean when something is happening inside of the function? So the only changes here are this negative and this 3. So what does the negative do? It means that this graph is going to reflect. So y is negative, so it's going to reflect over the x-axis. All right, and then this 3 is also affecting the y, so that means it's going to stretch three units vertically. So when we draw this, this graph should be reflected and stretched three units vertically from this one. 
All right, so we can do this like we would normally do. We would find the point values for our original function, x and sine of x. From this point on with our trig functions, we know the appropriate x values to use. It's the ones that have easy values like 0, 1, and negative 1. So we're going to use 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, and remember sine follows a specific pattern. It's always 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, because it repeats, always for sine. All right, and you can double check that on your unit circle. And then we want to move to our new transform graph, negative 3, a sine of x. So will the x values we use change? They should not. We are not changing x at all. So this will be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then we just have to determine how are we changing our y values. Well, the difference is we need to multiply our y values by negative 3. So we're going to have our negative 3 times 0, negative 3 times 1, negative 3 times 0, negative 3 times negative 1, and negative 3 times 0. So we have all the points we need to be able to graph this function. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So here, um, let's take a look. Let's label some axes first. All right, so one thing I want to point out, notice we're never going to get a value bigger than 1 or negative 1 for sine or cosine, mostly because the unit circle has radius 1. All right, so I am going to label my y axes first. I'm just going to do 1, 2, and 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then on the x-axis, I'm going to use things that make sense in sine and cosine, like 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And then also the negatives of those. All right, and so these go on. Okay, all right, well, let's use what we did before to plot some points, and then we're going to graph this. All right, so at x equals 0, our new function is at 0. At x equals pi over 2, our new function is negative 3. x equals pi, we're at 0. 3 pi over 2, we are at 3. 2 pi, we are at 0. All right, so notice 0, negative 3, 0, 3, 0. So it's going to do the same thing here. 0, we're going to go up to 3. 0, negative 3. So these periodic properties of sine and cosine are so helpful. All right, so then we're just going to connect our dots and create our little sine wave. And of course, this goes on. And this kind of doesn't really go down. It goes up like this. All right, so here's the graph of our sine function that has been reflected, and it has also been stretched three units. So it should look like this, but reflected and stretched. Okay, and so let's talk about some other things. It says, um, part C, determine the period and amplitude of our function. 
All right, so the period is how long it takes to repeat again. So what's one full cycle? 2 pi. Because after 2 pi, it's going to do the exact same thing again. And then finally, the amplitude. So if you look at the middle of the graph, how far is the distance between the middle and the bottom and the middle of the top? That is 3 units.